On May 24, 2023, Brighton's draw at the Champions Man City saw them qualify for European football for the first time in club history. The historic achievement arrives in the same season as their new manager, Roberto De Zerbi. As the Italian was appointed just one month into the campaign after Graham Potter was snatched away by Chelsea's new billionaire owners. And while the Blues have been in freefall ever since, Brighton have transformed themselves into the newest member of England's top six. As De Zerbi has taken the team to new heights, playing some of the most exciting and innovative football in the Premier League. And so today we analyze the Zerbi ball and meet the key players that make the style of play possible as we break down how Brighton shocked the Premier League. Welcome back guys, you're watching the Sideline Starters and my name is Andy, first team all sideline. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And once you've done that, let's get started. Now before we meet any players or get into some numbers, we have to break down the key principles of the Zerbi ball. Now I know Italians love using back threes that turn into back fives, but have any of you ever heard of a back six? While Brighton appear to line up in a 4-2-3-1 on paper, their build-up shape is slightly different, as the Zerbi drops his two holding midfielders significantly deeper, effectively creating a back six in what I'd love to call a 6-4 formation, but perhaps is more honestly a deeper 4-4-2. And I know you're probably thinking that this means the Zerbi parks the bus, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The back six is actually there to ensure that Brighton's players can comfortably keep possession by always having a passing option. In fact, the only two teams that have more possession of the football in the Premier League are Man City and Liverpool. But Brighton aren't keeping possession just for possession's sake, they do it with a very specific goal in mind, which is to bait the opposition into pressing them so they can exploit the open space left behind using an attack that relies on pace and dribbling from the left, finishing and creativity from the right, late runs into the box from midfield, and hold up play from the striker. The Zerbi's 4-4-2 practically begs the opposition to take the ball from them and punishes them the second they try. But all the tactics in the world would mean nothing without the right personnel, starting with their defenders. Brighton's most important defender in build-up play is definitely Captain Lewis Dunk. The 6-3 behemoth is told to pass, pass again and pass some more, as he leads the entire Premier League in completed passes with almost 200 more than Rodri and 500 more than Virgil van Dijk. Dunk's methodical back and forth passing frustrates opponents until they finally decide to press him, which allows him to easily exploit the acres of space left behind them, as the long ball specialist leads the team in long ball passes attempted by quite some margin. And when the long ball isn't available, he can pass the center back partner Adam Webster instead, who has outstanding passing efficiency as well, as evidenced by his percentiles for completed passes, total passing distance, and progressive passes per 90. Though it's worth noting, Webster is much more likely to take the ball forward and pass it into the penalty area. And with Brighton's center back so offensively preoccupied, more defensive responsibilities fall upon right back Joel Veltman, as the supporters player of the season runner up gives Brighton defensive cover ranking in the 93rd and 87th percentile for tackles in the defensive third and dribblers tackled per 90. But we truly get the best of both offense and defense when we look at Brighton's left back and left central midfielder. Being an Ecuadorian myself means I'm a just fanboy this entire next chapter. Starting with left back Pervis Estupiñan. He made a name for himself during his time in La Liga, where he became known for his explosive pace down the left side, as well as his truly exceptional service into the opposition penalty area. Brighton signed him from Villarreal last summer and he's only gotten better since joining, managing one goal and five assists this season, with that assist total being third highest on the team. Estupiñan gives Duncan Webster a receptive passing option that can sprint with the ball at his feet. His stamina and physical gifts allow him to run up and down that entire left side demonstrated by his heat map here. But aside from his offensive tendencies, Estupiñan is also a very intelligent defender, as he's logged the second most interceptions on the entire team this season, only behind midfielder Moises Caicedo, the second Ecuadorian in Brighton starting 11. He's the South American Conte, covering every blade of grass in his efforts to win Brighton back the ball, possessing a box-to-box -box engine that sees him dominate central areas of the pitch, as well as world-class tackling ability that results in him leading the entire team in tackles, registering over 30% more tackles than second place McAllister. But it's his additional attacking efficiency that makes him so crucial to the Zerbi ball. 
as he drops deep to receive the ball from defense and recycles possession flawlessly, as demonstrated by his percentiles amongst midfielders for short passes completed and pass completion percentage per 90. Oh, and did I mention that he's only 21 years old? His potential attracted offers from the likes of Man United and Chelsea, leading to a transfer saga that almost saw him leave the club in January, but luckily ended with the Ecuadorian signing an extension until 2027. And while Caicedo was a media magnet and garnered all the headlines this season, his midfield partner was able to stay under the radar. On the right side of Brighton's midfield, we find Pascal Gross. The 31-year-old German has been with Brighton since 2017 and has logged over 200 appearances for the club. And he's enjoyed his best season this year by far, scoring 9 goals and registering 7 assists in the Premier League. Totals that place Pascal at the very top of Brighton's goal contributions chart, even above their forwards. The guy performs about a billion Cruyff turns a game and is more than technically capable on the ball. He's become quite the goal threat this season and has a knack for arriving late in the box. But what makes him irreplaceable in the Zerbi squad is his versatility. While Gross's primary role is as Caicedo's pivot partner, he can occupy higher positions in the midfield and has even filled in at fullback as shown by his position log. But regardless of what position he plays, Gross's excellent service is key to Brighton's attack. As we can see from his percentile, for passes into the penalty area, crosses, and shot-creating actions per 90, but he doesn't attack through the midfield completely on his own. As Brighton's more advanced midfield role is occupied by Alexis McAllister, the Argentine made a name for himself in the fall as a crucial piece of the Albiceleste's World Cup winning squad, and continued his great season when he returned to Brighton. Scoring 10 goals in the league and having 2 assists, a goal total that actually makes him the Seagulls' top scorer this year. McAllister takes after the rest of the team and has every possible pass type in his locker. A strength that jumps off his scattering report, especially when looking at his completion percentage for short, medium, and long passes per 90. But the Zerbi's team has no room for any passengers and demands defensive contribution from everyone. A responsibility that McAllister is happy to put on his shoulders, as his percentiles for ball recoveries and tackles per 90 rank very highly amongst attacking midfielders. Brighton's midfield recycle possession amongst their defenders until they're ready to unleash progressive passes that break through the lines, where they usually find their most direct attacking threat down the left wing. Now I know the story is basically football cliche at this point, but for those of you that don't know, Brighton's Japanese star Karu Mitoma wrote his university thesis on how footballers process information during 1v1 dribbles. And the man is an awe-inspiring example of what would happen if words could come to life. As the lean 5'8 winger completely torches opposition defenders down that left hand side with precise control and explosive speed, and is quickly maturing into a world class ball carrier before our very eyes, as evidenced by his percentiles amongst wingers for carries into the penalty area, progressive carrying distance, and successful take ons. He's also incredibly industrious when it comes to defensive output as well ranking relatively high amongst wingers for tackles in the attacking third, dribblers tackled, and total tackles won. This defensive output on top of 7 goals and 5 assists in the Premier League are a testament to the money ball approach of Brighton's recruitment, demonstrating that it's just as effective to have 7 players that can score a handful of goals than it is to have just one that can score you 30. And while Brighton don't have a Mohamed Salah on that right side, they do have a Sully. 28-year-old Soli March is the Zerbi's underrated dual threat down the right channel. The Englishman has racked up 7 goals and leads the team in assists this season with 7. And when you add up his total goal contributions, the only player above him on the Brighton squad is Pascal Gross. And he's even more defensively astute than Mitoma. Boasting elite percentiles in tackles in the attacking third, clearances, and interceptions per 90. And it's been quite the journey for him to get to this level, as he was signed from semi-pro side Lewis FC in 2011 when he was just 17, which was way back when Brighton were still playing in the championship. March became a fan favorite and was awarded Brighton's Young Player of the Year award two seasons in a row. So to see him scoring a brace against the likes of Liverpool and being nominated for the Premier League Player of the Month award this past January is a feel-good story for the ages. And speaking of feel-good stories, that's a perfect segue for Brighton's final forward, veteran Danny Welbeck. 
After failing to live up to lofty expectations at Man United, he had an equally uninspiring tenure at Arsenal that ended with a broken leg, until he eventually landed at Brighton in 2020 where he's been at ever since. Now while Beck has never managed to score more than 9 Premier League goals in a season and Deserby knows that, which is why he tasked the 6-1 striker with dropping deeper to hold up play and bring his teammates into attack with him instead. A role that results in impressive percentiles for through balls, passes into the final third and shot creating actions. As Welbeck proves that strikers don't always need to score a bunch of goals to be impactful in modern football. And before we wrap up, I just gotta give out some honorable mentions. Starting with Julio and Ciso. The Paraguayan attacking midfielder is only 19 years old, but already has a screamer against Man City on his resume, and will likely take over for McAllister if he leaves in the summer. While Irish striker Evan Ferguson is 18 years old and has been on fire lately, and will probably be Brighton's new number 9 next season. The goalkeeping duo of Robert Sanchez and Jason Steele have been just as important to Brighton's build-up play as their center backs have, while Leandro Trossard's goals in the first half of the season paved the way for Brighton's success before ultimately leaving for Arsenal. And there we have it, those are Brighton's tactics as well as their most important players. An exceptionally well-rounded group of underrated workhorses, led by an Italian tactician who somehow managed to combine possessional play with faux counterattacks, using one of the most innovative shapes in the game today, in a philosophy that's rightfully referred to as the Zerbi Ball. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and smash the like button if you want to see more video essays like these. And for more Premier League content, you can click right here. Till next time, everyone.